cardiac failure is a topic uh, known also as heart failure. We are going to address these five questions as usual to help us to understand this condition. We are going to define the cardiac failure causes and we are going to check how to, uh, to find the diagnosis, mm, symptoms and signs, the complications, then we check treatment and prevention. The topic is broad. We need to see part one and part two. So in part one, we are going to see uh, the three questions answered. Then we we'll start with the definition of heart failure. What is it? The heart failure is a condition in which the heart fails to pump enough blood to meet the body needs. The body needs the blood constantly. If the heart fails to supply blood, then it is cardiac failure or heart failure. The heart can't pump blood to the body and the heart can't fill with enough blood. You see, two possibilities or both at the same time. Failing to pump or failing to get filled with blood or both. You can see a normal heart will be having average shape, average size, and uh, when now it starts ch ch changing, becoming bigger, bigger than usual, one should ask what's going on with the heart that's getting enlarged. One can see the muscle well organized, very strong to pump enough blood that will go to the water and sub be supplied in other part of the body. And once it is now weakened, this muscle once it is weakened, then uh, the, the ventricles are enlarged. The blood will eventually get stagnant. They can't go because there is no power to push the blood. So the heart is failing. The causes of cardiac failure, there are many. Some of them, it's coronary artery disease. When you talk about coronary, we talk about the vessels. The vessels of the heart, the one which feed the heart. Valvular heart diseases. Valves. These are the valves between auricles and ventricles or on the aorta. And myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction, we see it. Chronic alcoholism, dysrhythmias, the soda in the rhythm of the heart. Hypertension, infections. Those are the causes which are behind the cardiac failure. COPD, lung fibrosis, cardiomyopathy, drugs. Those who are using drugs like cocaine, diabetes. Eh? plus complications, those are the uh, risk factors and causes of cardiac failure. Like if you see on the coronary artery diseases, uh, when cholesterol, the cholesterol that uh, uh, consume from food, then uh, it will come and form some clots in the vessels. And once the blood comes by mistake it had deformed a clot then we get stuck here and any part that is supplied by this vessel and there is this blockage like this one hmm? less blood is, will reach the muscle in this section will what will die so that's a disease of coronary artery this artery has a problem to supply this section eh? we spoke about valves valvular diseases this is a normal valve it will open and close, open and close on each bit of the heart. You can see this one with three leaflets. Normally it will open and close well, well. But when it is diseased, it will fail. It is like a stenosis, it is very hard. There is always opening, whether it is contracting, uh, the heart contracts or uh, dilate, but there is this gap. So this will lead to cardiac failure. Yeah, because there is regurgitation. The blood goes back each time each time the, the heart pumps. And this is a stenosis. It's very stenosed. Mm -hmm. The blood, it's a, it's a problem for the blood to pass. You can see now when you talk about my cardio infarction, it starts with ischemia, then it will get dark, dark, become necrotic. Eventually this part, the whole muscle, what you can see this is a normal vessel. And this one now, it is a plaque. Uh, a teroma, a plaque that will come and decrease the lumen. Or it can be something like this. Or a lot of this um, uh, cholesterol tissues 
hmm, the form layer which will be blocking the passage and this part will get the closet will die then the call it heart attack which can lead to cardiac heart failure you can see other disorders of dysrhythmias normally this is a normal rhythm you can see this uh, which is equivalent to each contraction of the heart and it is always regular same interval hmm? the shape is very good but now when you start seeing something like this where you see the space between these two contractions are different then there is a problem also when you check the electrical activity of the heart the heart is this one is normal is beating well the top the down the top the down but when you check this one there is no organization it's just beating from no way there is no uh, coordination this activity so um these dysrhythmias can lead to heart failure as well so how do you know that one has a cardiac failure diagnosis in other words okay there is a right heart there is a left heart there are many signs that you might find on the right heart you might find some, what we call jugular vein distensions and you might find a chest a, a clear chest hypotension ascites hmm, water in the abdomen hepatomegaly swelling of the liver market peripheral edema they were lower limb will swell and poor exercise tolerance while on the left heart there will be uh, fatigue weakness chronic cough wheezing shortness of breath and fluid retention as well let's see it more a little bit in details as you see the organs from the uh, the, the the chest the lungs the heart the the liver once the heart fails the heart fails to receive blood from down coming inside to go to the lung and come back to be sent in the aorta then if the blood fails to come back it means the fluid will have to get stagnant in the down down parts of the body that's why it will create ascites in the abdomen and the lower limb swelling one can see because the blood that is drained from the head coming down to the heart the heart is failing to receive blood once it fails the blood will be having tendency to go back so the vessel on the neck will swell that's what you call raise the jugular vein they are swollen this is a good sign of uh, heart failure mm -hmm. particularly right side the water water in the abdomen ascites mm -hmm. liver liver will swell you can see this liver it's a normal size but this one is what enlarged we call it hepatomegaly you can see edema the lower limb edema because the water will try to find anywhere to escape then it will leak through the vessels then come outside the tissues then the limbs will swell you can see the heart if you observe where well, these two pictures are different this picture has a heart of normal size but this heart which is failing it is enlarged significantly enlarged it is almost touching the border of the chest this is a heart that is failing to pump blood it has a fade. This is a sign that you find on chest x-ray. Okay, the patient might have chest pain, fatigue, shortness of breath, then swelling of the lower limb, as we saw. Cyanosis, because the blood is not putting uh, uh, oxygen which is supposed to reach, then the, baby, the, the, the patient will be cyanotic, become blue. Therefore, this is the patient might sweat because the, the body is at, uh, at a war. Mm -hmm. there is a lot of fight going on to try to survive pulmonary congestion a lot of water in the lungs as well is not uncommon there are rares uh, when you oscillate the lung you put a stethoscope you hear the noise abnormal noise whether wheezes or wrong eye you know and uh, when you check the hands the fingers of the patient they might change the color they become blue instead of being pink you know, severe respiratory distress can be evidenced by what? Autopnea, the position in which the patient wants to sit in. The patient cannot uh, lie down. Hmm? He wants to sit down so that he can catch air. 
Loss of consciousness is common, especially when oxygen is getting uh, 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 depleted in the system, particularly in the brain. Then to, to agitation, confusion, then can lead to coma, even death. This is a picture summarizing all the problems where the formation of edema, where the, the, the water will be leaking, coming down to the lower limbs, other water will go to the lungs, uh, abdomen is swollen, the patient is coughing. Now, the vessels which we organized before, where gas exchange and uh, the blood was doing well in these capillaries, where the blood will come this way in the lungs, oxygen taken, and uh, actually this one again will go, eh? will go with unoxygenated blood going to the lung to be oxygenated. Now when there is a destruction of these structures, this is what will happen. The water will start leaking out. Mm? The water will leak out and eventually other chemicals will come to fight. To fight and uh, the cells will die, what we call apoptosis and uh, uh, vasoconstriction will take a place. It's a lot of problems and when it takes a long time, then some tissues become fibrotic, become hard. Thank you for being with us in part one. We are going to see part two, where we have to get a better understanding on the complications and the management of uh, uh, this topic. Thank you.